Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us today. Our guest is Dr. Jothi Rao. She's here with us as co-author of Finding Balance, Empower Yourself with Tools to Combat Stress and Illness. She's with us as a returning guest to talk about combining modern medical treatments with holistic practices. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for returning. You know, in other segments, we talked about, of course, your book, Finding Balance, Empower Yourself with Tools to Combat Stress and Illness. You're the co-author of this book. Why did you write this book? So my colleague, Dr. Agarwal, and I were looking for finding a resource for patients because both of us had very busy medical practices and the concept of adding lifestyle. You know, oftentimes patients hear things like, you know, go diet and exercise, get more rest, But that's it. That's all we are able to give them in our limited time span of the 10-minute appointment. So we decided to write this book on uh, well-researched aspects of lifestyle changes, which can directly impact and reduce chronic illness and really start the body to heal. Now, is your book a book about um, simply healing the body, or does it combine... um mental, physical, and spiritual aspects uh, to heal? So our book uh, has uh, several sections, and a lot of it has to do with uh, lifestyle changes that are dealing with nutrient changes, and I won't call it diet because it's more of a life plan. Um, the, uh, the addition of good high, the removal of things that are inflammatory for the body, such as certain foods, adding back things that are high nutritious foods, as well as working on uh, other things that affect our gut and our mind and body, such as sleep, exercise, yoga, meditation, uh, deep breathing. These kind of things are outlined in the book so that we can give patients several tools on trying to balance their life. Do you find that uh, patients that come in wanting to um, uh, completely remove pharmaceuticals from their uh, from their intake, do you ever advise against that, even though you are uh, implementing some holistic modalities? Oh, absolutely. We are trying to be very evidence-based in our practices. So for patients who are walking in with say heart attacks or strokes or some illness or diabetes, we're not, we're not trying to take them off their medications. What we're trying to do is impl- give them tools to try to reduce their need for medication. So I believe that, you know, taking people off prescriptions directly in, in, is not very safe. So we have to do things where we add lifestyle changes and then maybe wean people off. We follow people very closely. And over time, the need for prescriptions gets less and less. But there are certain medications that patients have to stay on sometimes when they have certain chronic illnesses, such as insulin for diabetes and uh, certain cholesterol medicines and aspirin and blood thinners if they've had heart attacks and strokes. So uh, we're not opposed to medications per se. We're more about trying to give people options and tools to try to add to the medications if they need to. You know, sometimes um, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that it may be a difficult task to change a, a patient's mind when it comes to uh, traditional versus uh, holistic or combining the two, especially when they're the ones who have this vested uh, interest in what the outcome is going to be. But from the medical practitioner's standpoint, what was it that happened with you to kind of change your mind? You, because you did not start out as a holistic practitioner. No, I was a a traditionally trained uh, internist, and when I first started, uh, I was more frustrated with the fact that everyone was kind of walking around in a fog and tired and sad, and and I I didn't really have good prescriptions for these, and I felt very frustrated not having enough in my toolbox really to kind of heal people. So I did go and get certified in acupuncture, Mm -hmm. which then did change my practice. But then after that, I I was trying to find, honestly, tools to help myself have more energy, function better, sleep well. And a lot of my path has been about trying to fix myself Mm -hmm. in terms of just being the best and healthiest that I can be. And uh, functional medicine was really the path that kind of fell on me in terms of finding the root cause of illnesses and finding the root imbalances of nutrients, of hormones, of you know, gut health, things like that. And and that seemed to work very well. So I started trying a couple of things and patients were getting much, much better. So it just kept me going along this path. And now that we are kind of employing lifestyle changes into our practices, it is, I will tell you, it's much more satisfying practice than just giving people band-aids for their illnesses. 
um, when it comes to acupuncture and um, I guess uh, other types of, uh, I guess, non-traditional treatments, what type of reception do you get when um, you offer some of these results to traditional practitioners and say, hey, well, here's here's the evidence. Um, what types of reception do you get? Right. So that's very interesting uh, because when I first started doing acupuncture, it was about 16 years ago, and the reception was very, very unfavorable in the beginning. Um, really, pay- doctors, other doctors didn't understand it, and there wasn't that much enthusiasm for it. But now I actually get, as the data has come out and NIH has backed it, and there's a lot of studies going on in the realm of acupuncture and other integrative modalities, I get referrals from my colleagues who are uh, gastroenterologists, cardiologists, uh, as well as orthopedic surgeons and pain management doctors for acupuncture for their patients because the success rates have been very, very positive in terms of incorporating that into a traditional program. How invasive are these some of these holistic practices? You talked about patients having heart attacks and and strokes. Um, Are we talking about replacing uh, angioplasty with acupuncture? No, no. So I don't think that acupuncture can replace angioplasty, but I do think that it reduces a stress burden, which can contribute to further heart attacks and strokes. So what I use acupuncture for is kind of just initiating the healing mechanism of rest for the body. And along the way, it can help with certain pain patterns and such. But it is basically a background tool to try to help people be calmer, more relaxed, uh, have less pain, sleep more restfully, which is always good for the body. So it would never really replace an angioplasty or kind of replace their medications, but I, but it does give patients um, a modality to reduce their need for these other things, other prescriptions. You know, oftentimes we um, we hear even traditional practitioners talking about uh, uh, breathing exercises uh, to get get focused and and uh, I guess meditate for lack of a better term. Do you um, employ meditation in your practice as well? Yes. Yeah, so one of the things we do often when we have large groups, when we're talking to patients and and uh, people who have you know kind of a I guess, the skepticism about what we're talking about. We ask them to breathe a four, seven, eight breath where they're breathing in for four, holding it for seven, and exhaling it for eight. And we have them do it several times, and it is amazing how much calmer people feel, and they realize how useful this tool is because their breath is always with them. We also have people often stand up and do some yoga poses and mm-hmm. do something called sun salutation to just wake their body up and um, so those little things that we do do kind of encourage patients and people who are listening to us to, uh, to try to at least find out more because they do feel better with a couple of simple interventions, mm-hmm. um, stretches and some poses as well as some breathing techniques. I think it's very powerful to have breathing tools in terms of relaxing the nervous system and combating that adrenaline response all of us are walking around with often. In your experience, do you see uh, a rise in practices combining or offering both uh, traditional modalities as well as holistic? Absolutely. I do believe this is the practice of the future. I think patients are demanding more than just medications. I think physicians are also getting frustrated practicing limited with limited healing tools. So there is a huge need. And I think if you um, look, there's about 400,000 or more of uh, practitioners that are now doing inter- integrative medicine, whether they're nutritionists or they're um, physical therapists or they're physicians or whatever it might be, there's there's a huge boom, I think, in terms of the need as well as the training programs, and I think we're only going to see this grow. Great. Now, where can our listeners get a copy of your book, Finding Balance, Empower Yourself with Tools to Combat Stress and Illness? Uh, they can go to our my website called rowwellness.com or my colleague's website, drmonicaagarwal.com, or to the Amazon website. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes and listen with Dr. Jyothi Rao co-author of the book Finding Balance, Empower Yourself with Tools to Combat Stress and Illness.